Good afternoon. Um, this is Stephen Goldman from Environmental Defense Fund. I'm a marketing and communications coordinator on the corporate partnerships team, and I'm pleased to welcome everybody to today's webinar on the heavy-duty truck efficiency standards, a critical opportunity for companies to lead on cutting corporate freight costs and emissions. Uh, you'll be hearing from Jason Mathers, uh, senior manager at EDF, uh, focusing on supply chain logistics, and Carol Lee Ron from Ceres, who's the senior manager for their tra transportation program. Uh, a quick bit of logistics for, the, for everyone. If you aren't already dialed in, the phone number for this webinar is 866-740-1260, and the access code is 572-3357. And if you weren't aware, the webinar is being recorded for later viewing and sharing. Also, please submit all questions via the chat window that you see on your screen. The recording and the slides from today's webinar will be available tomorrow uh, at edf.org slash freight. And what you'll learn today is that uh, the proposed rules that have been put out by the, the EPA and the, the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration are a good first step, that today is, a, a, is the opportunity to strengthen rules to maximize cost savings and sustainability benefits. And we'll also talk about how your company can support strong truck standards. So our two presenters today are Jason Mathers, a senior manager on Green Freight Environmental Defense Fund and Carol Lee Ron, a senior manager on the transportation program at Ceres. And with that, so to kick this off, um, today's webinar is really focused on what uh, both Ceres and, and EDF have been working on, which is what we refer to as the business policy nexus which is that opportunity for companies to engage on both sustainability, um, on opportunities that help align their sustainability goals and their government relation goals in order to help drive, to drive, drive greater gains in sustainability. Now EDF has been working in a number of areas um, in order to foster innovation, uh, both through its work on supply chains, including keeping uh, toxic chemicals out of, out of supply chains, working with Climate Core, as you see on the screen, to help companies identify opportunities for superior energy management and other efficiencies, and leading different innovative efforts such as our partnership with, with FedEx and uh, our current challenge to try and combat methane emissions from the oil and gas sector. And Ceres, through its BICEP coalition, um, has been committed to working with policymakers to pass meaningful energy and climate leg legislation that's consistent with their core investor principles. And you can see on the screen the wide variety of stakeholders they've been working through and working with. And to walk you through the agenda for today's webinar, um, first we'll talk about how the standards that are being covered are relevant to your company. Then we'll walk through the details of the proposed standards. We'll talk about what's possible in terms of improving the standards. And then we'll look at what's in it for individual companies, how your voice matters in the, the process and then lastly, how companies can take action. I'm just going to pause for just one moment. Um, I was seeing one of the comments uh, coming in through the chat box. Are, is anybody else having a difficulty seeing either the slides or hearing? Can't if, you, if you can't hear. But yeah, if someone can confirm that they are hearing yeah. the audio, that would be fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, we already have, we have a confirmation. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everyone. So with that, um, thanks for everybody's patience. A little bit of technical hiccups this morning. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, to Carol Lee, to, Carol Lee uh, to kick us off and talk about how um, the proposed standards are relevant to, to your and other companies. Well, thank you, Stephen. Um, so obviously the, the truck standards are relevant to any, basically every company in the United States that relies on trucking. Everything you buy or sell relies on trucks. Uh, in the United States, 70% of freight is moved by trucks, and the efficiency of those trucks matters because it affects your freight costs, 
as well as your environmental footprint. You can see from this next slide that, uh, that fuel comprises a large, the largest component of trucking costs. U.S. businesses spend about $650 billion a year on freight trucking services. And uh, it costs about $73,000 a year to fuel a combination trailer, which gets about six miles a gallon. Um, so obviously, the fuel economy of these trucks directly affects your bottom line. And the, the carbon footprint of the trucking sector is quite significant. In fact, the trucking sector is the single fastest growing source of greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. It is projected to grow by 40% by the year 2040. And it's interesting, when you look at this slide, you can see the, the bar on the far right, the greatest reductions that we're projecting are from, actually from the CAFE standards, the passenger vehicle standards. And on the far left, that's the projected increase in emissions from trucks. So without taking action on trucks, we're coming to come close to negating the benefits of the CAFE standards. Uh, so having efficient truck, trucks available is critical to help you meet your carbon reduction goals and to address the larger climate risk. Uh, the, if we talk quickly, I'd like to quickly talk about the genesis of these regulations. Um, they actually grew out of the Energy and Independent Security Act that was signed by President Bush in 2007, and that act was based on the recognition that our dependence on oil poses serious economic and security risks, and that we need to make our vehicles more efficient to address those risks. Um, in 2011, President Obama signed the first truck standards. Um, we actually have three age regulatory agencies at play here. Um, NHTSA, which is, sets the fuel efficiency standards. EPA sets the greenhouse gas emission standards. It's authorized to do that under the Clean Air Act and the uh, Massachusetts versus EPA uh, Supreme Court decision. And we also have California in the mix because California under the Clear, Clean Air Act is also empowered to set its own um, vehicle standards. So all three agencies are working together to come up with a uni uniform standard. Uh, so fa the phase one standards, which came into place in 2011, cover the years 2014 to 2018. They will save $50 billion in fuel costs and 530 million barrels of oil. Right now, the phase two standards are in play, and they govern the years 2019 and beyond. Uh, in June, the proposed regulations came out. Uh, the public comment period will be from June to September of this year, and we expect to see the final regulations in March of 2016. The phase one uh, standards were an unmitigated success. We have a quote here from the CEO of Daimler saying how there are good examples of regulations that work well. We've seen record truck sales and uh, profits from, from manufacturers like Cummins and Navistar as well. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Jason Mathers, who is going to give us some details about the proposed standards and also talk about the results of an analysis that Series and EDF partnered on. Great. Well, thank you, Carol Lee, uh, and thank you all for, for joining the call today. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to learn about uh, these standards and, uh, uh, and, and how your companies uh, can play an important role in securing strong final standards. The, um, the first thing I think that's important to know about these standards is that 
they cover a very wide range of trucks. You know, heavy trucks um, <coughs> uh, in, under this rule um, uh, re capture everything from a, a, a large pickup truck like a Ford F-250 up through um, a tractor trailer truck. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the um, length of this proposal has been highlighted and, and it reflects the diversity um, of, this, um, of this marketplace and the unique rules required uh, for, for each of these classes. Um, most of our presentation is actually going to focus on the tractor trailer trucks. Um, and there's two reasons for that. One is that tractor trailer trucks account for um, nearly 70% of the fuel consumed by heavy trucks in America. Uh, and tractor trailer trucks are what um, brings, you know, our goods to market. So if you're a, um, a, a, maybe a product manufacturer or another uh, shipper on the phone today, your connection to these standards is, you know, your products, uh, you know, in the, sitting in the back of a truck on the way to a retail uh, facility or um, a distribution center or increasingly to customers' homes. Uh, I'm going to move on to some, some other key elements that I really I want to touch on before we get into the standards themselves. Uh, there's, uh, uh, as I noted, there's a wide range of vehicles um, in these standards. And the, the standards, um, there's actually a, a multiple standards under these rules, right? There are fuel efficiency standards that are set by NHTSA and greenhouse gas standards that are set by the EPA. Uh, and they're set in a way um, to match each other and uh, to require a single regulatory um, compliance pathway, uh, and that is met by the, um, uh, the equipment manufacturers, uh, so in this case, um, you know, the truck makers. Uh, and for each segment uh, of this market, again, for the, um, you know, heavy pickup trucks, for the vocational trucks, and for the tr combination truck trailer trucks, uh, distinct standards are set, and those standards are set to reflect uh, the fuel savings potential and the technology potential for, um, for those duty cycles. Another key element to, to touch on is that uh, uh, there are distinct standards for, um, for uh, the fuel efficiency of engines for the fuel efficiency of the vehicles, including the engines, uh, and uh, for the, in the combination tractor-trailer market, uh, for uh, the trailers themselves. And this is uh, the uh, addition of the trailers is a, uh, an important and critical step forward that uh, um, the current proposed uh, regulations uh, uh, would put into place. The last key design element I want to flag before we go through the rules or the proposal itself is that, um, you know, the standards that uh, were recently proposed by the uh, EPA and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration um, uh, go into effect in 2021. Uh, they would have an, uh, an increase in stringency in 2024 and then a further increase in stringency in 2027. Uh, so there are three compliance periods. The, the numbers we're going to talk about are the final standard, or the final um, uh, numbers, the 2020, sorry, the 2027 standards. Uh, it's important to note that those will be phased in, um, you know, at over three particular periods. So with that, I'm going to hop into the engine standard. Uh, <coughs> what is, um, so for, as, as Carolee noted, there's a, um, uh, a currently a first phase greenhouse gas standard that went into place in t uh, 2014 and new standards under that program will go into place in 2017. Uh, and over that period, uh, the uh, <coughs> um, agencies are required requiring fuel consumption and CO2 reductions uh, uh, on the order of, uh, you know, five to nine percent on, uh, on trucks with the kind of average point being about a 6% reduction. Uh, for the entire uh, phase two period, uh, running from 2021 through uh, uh, model year 2029, with the, the last standards going to effect in 2027, uh, uh, the agency are, are, are requiring, are going to, re are proposing to require a 4.2 uh, reduction in fuel consumption CO2 from engines. The uh, engines are, 
projected to increase in cost by $1,700 for a tractor engine, um, you know, uh, in 2027, and that is that would be phased in over the three distinct periods, and for four to five hundred dollars for the vocational engines, again phased in over the three peri three periods. Uh, those are big. Those could sound like big numbers. I think it's important to put uh, them in um, in perspective. As Carol Lee noted, um, combination tractor trailer trucks um, can burn uh, upwards of seventy to eighty thousand dollars a year in fuel. Um, so uh, uh, an engine that's going to reduce fuel consumption four percent. Um, is going to pay back pretty quickly. Uh, I'm going to move um, move on now to the combination uh, uh, tractor standards. Um, there are um, uh, uh, the again reflecting the great diversity in this marketplace. The agency has uh, uh, set um, specific standards um, for um, nine different you know body types and duty and duty cycles that are common amongst uh, combination tractor uh, standards today. I mean, the, um, the class eight sleeper high roof is the most common line haul uh, tractor uh, and that's what I'm going to focus on. The agencies are uh, going to require that the fuel consumption and CO2 reductions of, uh, of that duty cycle be on the order of 24 percent compared to 2017. Uh, and that would uh, uh, move the MPG of that trailer, or sorry, that tractor up to about eight uh, miles per gallon, assuming a fairly inefficient conventional uh, trailer. Uh, in total, this would, uh, the expected cost increase is going to be uh, $12,800 uh, in total through the uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2027 period. Uh, and that includes the um, uh, the engine component. Again, these are these are trucks that are consuming upwards of uh, you know seventy to eighty thousand dollars a year in fuel. And so, even with um, uh, that type of uh, up, uh, upfront cost, uh, the agencies are projecting a, uh, a around a two-year payback for these um, uh, for these new standards. Uh, we're going to now move on to the trailer standards. Uh, 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 as with uh, the other aspects of this rule, the, um, the agencies have taken, um, uh, you know, uh, have taken pains to ensure that uh, there are distinct standards that re represent the diversity of this market. Uh, the uh, long dry box is the most commonly used uh, long haul um, trailer in, in use today, and uh, the agencies are uh, going to require those uh, to uh, reduce fuel consumption uh, or, or to do their part to reduce fuel consumption through better aerodynamics and other means uh, by uh, on, the, on the order of 9% um, again co compared to a, uh, a conventional trailer. Uh, the, um, <clears throat> the cost uh, for a long box trailer uh, would be projected to increase by $1,400 over the totality of this period um, and uh, again you know that uh, is going to go a long way to uh, enabling uh, these uh, trucks to uh, become significantly more fuel efficient. Um, I'm going <coughs> to move to the, the, on the next slide here. I, I think it does a really good job of illustrating the phase in of these standards. So I noted there's uh, three compliance pathways, and we're seeing a, a gradual step down in 2021, and 2024, and uh, 2027. So I want to take a minute uh, and talk a bit about uh, the, the potential of the technology in this space. You know, as, uh, as, uh, you know, uh, as Carol Lee noted earlier, these rules, um, you know, have a, have a history of success. There's a strong uh, regulatory under um, a foundation through the Phase I program that is working well. Uh, and there's a strong uh, political support for these rules, um, you know, that, that we're, we saw in the first phase uh, of, of the program and, you know, have kept, kept up, I think, largely through the proposal, uh, proposed rule that the agencies announced last month. Uh, you know, when, it, when we're thinking about the tractor-trailer trucks, I think a key point to note is that uh, there is uh, already technology in the marketplace today uh, to meet these standards, right? We are seeing 
uh, uh, currently available tractor trailer technologies can achieve uh, nine miles per gallon, uh, you know, and deliver significant uh, significant paybacks. Um, yeah, the, as a, a few examples of that, uh, I want to uh, you know highlight uh, you know the the trucks we're seeing on on the screen. You know, today there's a, one of those trucks, the the Nussbaum truck, um, is uh, currently you know on the road today type uh, truck. Um, and uh, you know that's a fleet that's been a leader in fuel in fuel savings. The two other fleets are, are two other trucks are um, uh, are from the Super Truck Research pro uh, Program, and that's a, a Department of Energy funded program that's expected or that's intended to showcase technologies that could be commercially available in 2020. Uh, one of those trucks is from uh, Peterbilt and Cummins and is delivered 10.7 miles per gallon, and the other one from Daimler is delivered 12.2 miles per gallon. Uh, you know, we've also have seen uh, other evaluations that demonstrate the, the ability uh, to achieve significant reductions. The National Academy of Sciences had a report in 2010 that found opportunities to cut heavy truck fuel consumption by 50%. Uh, and uh, the uh, International Council for Clean Transportation recently put out a report that noted that uh, uh, emerging technologies in the marketplace can double fuel economy of combination trucks to 12 to 11 or 12 miles per gallon with payback periods of 18 months or less in the 2025 to 2030 timeframe. So I think the key, kind of key takeaway point here is that these standards are doable with the technology we have today. Um, we also think that uh, the technology we have today and the merger technology, uh, we can go even further than where these standards have been set. Uh, and if we can actually move on to uh, uh, this, the next slide, uh, EDF, Ceres, and other advocacy organizations are calling for fuel consumption reductions on the order of 40%. Uh, the current proposal uh, comes in the range of about 35% reductions compared to a 2010 baseline. Uh, as Carolee noted, Ceres and EDF uh, undertook uh, extensive analysis of uh, the cost savings uh, from a 40% standard for, cabin for combination tra tractor trailers, and we found that uh, you know the, that a tractor trailer truck that uh, met that standard, which would be around about a 10.7 miles per gallon in in 2020, uh, 2025 would deliver um, on the order of about uh, uh, 21 cents per mile net savings with a significant reduction in fuel cost and a manageable three cent per mile increase in equipment cost. So overall significant uh, fuel savings reductions. Uh, and these reductions would start uh, on new equipment as soon as it goes into uh, 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 on the road and would scale up over time um, as we had more and more turnover uh, of, of the legacy equipment. And this next slide really kind of shows how, um, how those savings would play out. We're you know, projecting uh, you know, uh, overall costs to move goods are, will increase over the coming years with uh, inflation and with uh, increased fuel prices. Uh, with strong standards in place that would reduce consumption on the order of 40%, freight shippers would see reductions uh, in their freight rates of about 7% compared to where they otherwise would be, um, and that this uh, could mean a lot of uh, uh, a lot of savings for your company. Uh, here is a modeled case of a uh, for a large consumer product company. We're assuming about 60 million miles in their in their distribution system, and we're seeing uh, reductions on the order of about 13 million dollars a year um, in uh, in that 2040 time frame. Uh, using dedicated equipment. Uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Carol Lee, and I look forward to, uh, to answering uh, your questions. Thanks, Jason. Well, you certainly made a very compelling case for uh, supporting stronger standards. Um, I'd like to just talk briefly now about what we'd like to see companies do and, and how they can do it and how we can help you. Um, we really need corporate leadership at, at this point. Um, brands are the largest consumer of for hire trucking services, but uh, all companies that bear the cost of shipping freight, those with fleet, fleets or those who hire, are the, are the stakeholders that stand to gain the most from fuel efficiency standards 
because it is they who will see real cost savings. Um, if we look at all the stakeholders, it's, it's really the companies that are depending on, on trucking to move their goods that have the greatest economic interest in efficient trucks. Strong standards are going to serve to make more fuel efficient, cleaner trucks available for your company. Obviously, no one company can drive the market for efficient trucks. You need to have regulations in place to ensure that you will have access to those trucks. Uh, the CAFE or the passenger vehicle standards are a great example of regulation driving innovation. And once the latest the CAFE standards went into um, effect the, starting in, in 2012, we saw a great, much greater diversity of more fuel efficient vehicles available. Um, and obviously strong truck standards would drive the same um, benefits and improvements. And finally, we really can't afford to wait. This is our last chance for over a decade to lock in a clean and fuel efficient fleet. Um, so it's really critical to act now. Um, and we already are seeing businesses step up. Um, the Pepsi had a, a great op-ed in the Wall Street Journal about the importance of, of fuel efficient uh, trucks. Um, ben and Jerry's also had a great op-ed um, actually in The Guardian that was calling for stronger standards than those that, e that EPA have uh, proposed. They are calling for the 40 percent uh, reduction in fuel consumption that Jason described. And IKEA similarly also uh, signed on to a letter asking for strong um, standards. And Clarice, Clar sorry, Clarice Ryder um, from IKEA, I believe, is on the phone. And Clarice, did you want to make any kind of brief comment about your support for strong standards? You can't do it? Oh, sorry, Clarice, maybe at the question and answer. Um, section, uh, you'll have a, a chance to talk, but I'd really like to uh, applaud these companies for stepping out and taking a stand on this issue. Next. So there are a variety of ways that you can engage. Um, there are going to be some public hearings coming up in Chicago and Los Angeles in August. We don't have the exact dates yet. We'll make that available to you as soon as we know but you can testify at those hearings. You can also submit comments during the upcoming comment period. And you can also write op-eds and blogs to show your support for strong standards. And we can help you engage. We can help draft talking points. We can, help, we can do individual briefings for your company. Um, Jason and I have been uh, talking to individual companies about the cost savings that their companies would see under strong standards. And we can also obviously help you with op-eds and blogs and anything else you need. Um, but your voice really matters and uh, it's important that you step forward. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Carolee and Jason. Um, I just want to remind everyone that we're, uh, as we move into the Q&A section, if you want to um, quickly submit your, your questions to us via the chat window, I know um, Jason and Carolee would love uh, the opportunity to answer them. Um, Actually, we're going to unmute uh, uh, Clarice Ryder from IKEA so that she can say a few words for just a moment. Hi, Clarice? can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, well, thank you for just letting me say a few words. I work in sustainability for IKEA's transportation in North America covering the U.S. and Canada. And uh, IKEA has CO2 reduction goals for its transportation specifically. And as a shipper, uh, we don't own any of our own fleet, and so these, uh, these, these types of truck standards uh, are just one of the ways that we can work with our carriers to reach our goals. So that's really, 
the main motivation why IKEA's distribution services in North America signed on to the letter that was sent by EDF and Ceres. Oh, that's great. Add. Thank. You. That's great. Thank you, Clarice. You are real. I congratulate you on your leadership. Great. So as we as we please do uh, send some uh, questions in the Stephen. I think one of the things, one of the questions that we're often we're asked is how are how are fleets reacting to the proposal, um, and. Uh, I, I, one of the, the ways we, we, can, we like to respond to that is by pointing to, to Pepsi's example. Pepsi, uh, PepsiCo is the largest private fleet in the U.S., um, you know, representing uh, not just the, the, the soft drink um, uh, brands, but also, um, you know, Frito-Lay and, uh, and, and uh, Quaker and, and uh, other leading brands. Uh, and so that's, a, I think, a, a great example of a company who is uh, at the forefront uh, of calling for strong standards. We we'll also see uh, companies like uh, uh, FedEx, um, uh, just recently uh, Mitch Jackson, uh, who, who was uh, energy and sustainability with, uh, with FedEx, uh, noted the, um, uh, that more can be done to improve fuel efficiency in large trucks and uh, um, how that they remained engaged in uh, the phase uh, in the phase two standards. Uh, America Trucking Association uh, issued a, um, a press release on the day the, the proposals came out, um, applauding the aim of the uh, um, of the proposal um, and noting that, that you know they've been working well with the with the agency and continuing to plan to continue to stay engaged uh, through the regulatory process. Um, and then uh, I think lastly, I'll just point to. Um, a comment that Walmart made in a sustainability report uh, last uh, or this past April, where it highlighted these phase two standards um, as a type of a policy uh, that can uh, help um, you know help uh, align uh, supply and demand and push for efficiency in a safe and responsible way. Um, so with that, uh, uh, Stephen, uh, what questions do we have from the audience? Uh, we've just had one one come in already. On, uh, uh, about uh, so, will the proposed rules encourage uh, natural gas vehicles or other low carb carbon alternative fuels? Uh, it's a it's a great uh, it's a great question. The um, proposal itself does not uh, specifically um, set standards for uh, uh, natural gas vehicles or or alternative fuel vehicles. Uh, rather, it sets standards uh, if, uh, for the the engine standard for natural for Diesel trucks or for diesel engines and for gasoline engines, um, you know, alternatively fueled vehicles can, um, uh, you know, uh, are able are able to uh, meet those standards uh, kind of based on their their engine design. You know, I think we see that natural gas vehicles, um, you know, have a have a clear role to play uh, in um, uh, you know in in these rules. There's a clear path forward, I should say, on for natural gas vehicles to comply with these rules. Um, you know, from environmental defense funds perspective, uh, you know, we recognize that natural gas vehicles have the potential to deliver uh, greenhouse gas reductions uh, uh, compared to diesel trucks. Uh, however, today we do not think that potential is realized, uh, and that is largely because of methane emissions associated with the fuel supply chain of natural gas trucks. Um, you know, one of the things that we're looking to see happen in these standards is for the uh, for the agencies uh, to uh, undertake a full uh, fuel cycle accounting approach uh, and recognize the um, the, the uh, overall impact of the fuel that's combusted. Um, and uh, and I, I guess one one last thing on the on natural gas, we, we're seeing that the agency um, is. Uh, uh, Putting, uh, putting forward in its proposal um, a key element to reduce methane emissions from natural gas engines, and that is the, the closing uh, the crankcase in, in, the, um, uh, in the engines, spark ignited engines, and that's critically important. Um, thank you. And then um, I see a question from Daniel Cullen um, asking about the remaining political um, hurdles for the proposed standards to clear. So, Daniel, the, uh, the public comment period extends through mid-September, and 
at that point, the agency takes all the comments back and um, should be coming out with, with a final standard in March. Um, so this is the next couple months are our opportunity to uh, make sure that the standards are as strong as possible. Great. Um, and I want to, sorry, address there's a, a question here about class three through six fleets uh, and uh, uh, not addressing them. Uh, you know, we have, um, you know, we chose not to go into detail on those in this presentation in, in part of just, it's a, there's a lot of different uh, classes of, of trucks. The, um, uh, there, there is a very good summary by the International Council of Clean Transportation um, that breaks out the various classes, uh, various standards for e uh, the, in the class three through six range, or I should say it's, it's more than that, it's the vocational truck range. Uh, and I'd be happy to, to pass that along uh, to anyone that wants to go into more detail there. I think the one key point I would know is, is that when we get into vocational vehicles, uh, the, the agency, you know, kind of continuing with their, or the agencies with their, um, the model that they've taken throughout these standards, uh, crafted um, specific standards for a range of, of uh, vehicles, right, uh, uh, reflecting the, um, the ability of those distinct vehicles to deliver uh, fuel savings reduction. So when you get into the vocational space, there's different standards for buses than there are for delivery trucks, than there are for utility trucks, um, there, than there are for trash trucks, right? So uh, all of those, um, uh, you know, uh, types of trucks have their own standards that are crafted to uh, fit with what's cost effective today. Take a moment. If you have, if anyone else has additional questions, please feel free to submit them through the chat window. And just to remind you, so this has been part of uh, EDF's webinar series, looking at the business policy nexus, which is um, areas in which businesses can engage on policy that will help them meet their sustainability goals, and to do so in, co in ways that are cost effective. I think just to kind of maybe put a. a, a, a Final thought from from uh, you know uh, EDF's perspective about these standards, you know I think you know the, we saw these the first proposal as a as a good first step. Uh, we think it could go further, uh, and that um, you know we think it's it's critically important that the final rules are crafted uh, to drive greenhouse gas reductions uh, and cost savings uh, for the for particularly for the companies who are using. Uh, freight trucks to get their products to market, right? That, and that your voices will be critical uh, in uh, in helping to make the case um, th that the agency should finalize strong standards, um, and uh, uh, you know, and in doing so, re reduce greenhouse gas emissions in your supply chain, uh, and uh, and help companies save, um, you know, potentially you know millions of dollars a year. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, and I, that's well said, Jason. I completely agree. Um, I, I think, you know, from our perspective, that not having, not adopting um, stronger standards, the 40% reduction in fuel consumption, which is clearly cost effective and technically feasible, is really just leaving money on the table. And also um, taking a an unnecessary uh, and dangerous delay in cutting greenhouse gas emissions. Um, I just saw this morning that Noah said that 2014 is, is I'm mean, sorry, 2015 is going to be the hottest year on record. Um, so we need to address climate now. Great, right, thank you. And, uh, and EDF and Series are here to, to help you. Uh, Carolee and I will be will be following up individually with uh, with all of you on, on the call. Uh, and, uh, and we look forward to answering additional questions that you have um, about these standards uh, and working with you to, to help your companies engage on these standards if you choose to. Um, and uh, uh, if you want to reach out to us, um, Carol Lee and myself, we, we welcome that and our contact information is on the screen now. Um, so thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I uh, really appreciate your interest in this subject and your continued efforts to shape sustainability at your companies. Yeah, thank you.
And just as we wrap up, if anyone has a last question for Jason or Carol Lee, uh, feel free to send that through. Let's give you one more minute. All right, I don't, I don't see any more coming through. So with that, I think we'll wrap up. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, this will be archived and put up on edf.org slash freight uh, by tomorrow, including with the slides. So, and, 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 and we'll make sure that we also uh, send that around as an email to everyone who attended. So thank you for your time and uh, have a great day.